The title of my message today is, You Shall Call His Name Jesus. I looked up some of the most unusual names in 2018. Wow. For girls, let me give you just a few of these. Karani, Taffeta, Petula, Stockard, Marty, Gabby, Fiametta, I'm not sure if I'm even saying them all right, Samaya, Azema, Azami, Sai, Yadira, Zaina, Imani, Nava, Nazaya, Ada, Lumi, Abelia, Soleil, Palace, Tiara, Ma, uh, Mila, and Calpurnia. These are some of the girl names. If this is your name, it's beautiful. I'm, they're beautiful. I better say that, right? I'm just, these are some unusual names. I'm not a stone thrower. I've got a butler, for crying out loud. I remember when we named her, uh, my sister, my oldest sister, we weren't finding out if it was a boy or a girl. We wanted to be surprised. And so she comes out, it's a girl. And so I'm calling some of my family. I called Tammy, my oldest sister, and I said, it's a girl. She said, what's her name? And we said, Butler. She's like, well, what are you going to call her? <laughs> butler. <laughs> Nobody had ever heard it. To this day, I've never heard of another person named Butler. I'm not a stone thrower when it comes to unusual names. I'm just telling you, here's some of the unusual names of 2018. Here's some of the boy names. Uh, McEnroe, McEnroe, Belisario, Arno, Carew, Elio, I've got one close to that, McGuire, Kylo, Misael, Desi, that's all coming back around. Desi was a 50s name. Uh, Lior, Zevi, or Zevi, I don't know for sure. Sinjin, Brogan. I like that one. Hey, bro. That's, that's kind of cool. Hey, bro. Just call him bro. Uh, LeBron. Yes, that makes sense. Hayes. Hayes is one. Alessio, Alessio, Warwick, Garrick, Aurelio, Zane. Sajan, Rio, uh, Cillian, and Philo. I thought that was dough, but. And then there's some unisex names, not to be, uh, if, you, if you just don't know and you want to go either way. Nile, like the river. Fire. Fire, okay. Uh, Shalom. Wow, you're just speaking peace every time you call his or her name, Shalom. Puma, Puma, okay, I, I thought they were shoes, or a cat, <laughs> Revel is one for a uh, boy or girl, Kodiak, Ezri, Kiernan, Rebel, or, ready for this one, Galilee, Galilee, these are real names, 2018 names, then, of course, there are the city names. Phoenix, we have a Phoenix in our school. Dallas, that's a popular name today. You like that one, Joe, I, okay. Paris, and, you know, if, if we were just naming city names, I, I should have named you Terre Haute. <laughs> Terre Haute, get over here. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't resist that. But the, the, the struggle is real when it comes to naming your child. We look through baby books. We search the web. We consider family tree and, and names of ancestors. When we were naming Elliot, come, thinking of what we might name our son, I wanted Morgan... I wanted Morgan, and the middle name was going to be Foster, Morgan Foster. And Karen said, that sounds like a bar drink. <laughs> yeah, give me a Bloody Mary, a Tom Collins, and a Morgan Foster. 
Well, Karen came up with, with Elliot, and I am so glad she did because it fits. Elliot is Elliot Boyd. His middle name is Boyd. Boyd is a family name. He is named after his great-grandfather on Karen's side. Butler is Butler Ray. Her middle name is Ray, and she is named after my father. The Ray portion is in honor of my dad, Donald Ray. Um, and then there's Daisy, which isn't Daisy at all on her birth, birth certificate. It is actually Harris Fay. And Fay is part of my heritage on my side. Um, my grandmother was Bessie Fay. My mother was Sherilyn Fay. My sister is Beth La Fay. Uh, Maddie, her cousin, is Maddie Fay. We do like Fay a lot. Why all the hassle? Because names are important. And names actually have meaning and significance. My name, well, my kids call me dad. My dad calls me son. Many of you call me Pastor Steve. My sisters mostly call me Stephen Lee. And my wife calls me Steve or idiot, depending on the day. <laughs> Stephen, it means royalty, crowned one. That also fits with what Karen uh, is meaning sometimes. She wants to just crown me. But there is a name huh, that is so far superior than my name or your name. It is the name of Jesus. And the name of Jesus has great, great significance. You see, we will know Jesus more as we know his names. Clues to his character are actually found in his name. And so, if you don't mind, get your magnifying glass out today. We are going to look closely and examine the names of Jesus so that we might know him better. How many want to know him better today? I believe we will as we look at his names. We start with this. Jesus. We start with Jesus. The angel of the Lord told Joseph exactly what he was to name his son. He said, you shall call his name, say it with me, Jesus. Now Jesus, at the time, wasn't that out of the ordinary. In fact, his name was quite ordinary. It's still ordinary to this day in many Latino nations, Spanish-speaking nations, Jesus, spelled the same way. Anybody named Jesus here today? I've met many named Jesus. In the Old Testament, you see a version of this, Yeshua, Joshua, it was a common name. It was an ordinary name. It means this, Jehovah saves. The name Jesus means Yahweh saves, Jehovah saves, our God saves. That's what it means. An ordinary name, yes, but it has extraordinary potential. What can we do with this name? Let me give you three things that we can do with this name. We can pray. John 14, verses 13 and 14, whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Look at verse 14. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Keep in mind, just speaking the name of Jesus in hopes that you will get what you want. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about speaking a name and believing in the name, speaking that name in faith. Praying in the name of Jesus. There are millions of people around the world that pray. In fact, there are some sects 
of religious groups, they put Christians to shame when it comes to prayer life. And they're not even praying to a God that has ears and can hear, let alone an ability to answer their prayer. But we, as followers of Christ, we believe that Jesus died for the sins of mankind. We further believe that he was buried in a borrowed tomb. It was borrowed because he would only need it for three days. Let me go on to say that we believe that in three days he rose again to live. We believe in a God that has ears to hear. He does hear when we pray. And the God that we pray to has an ability to answer prayer. Pray in Jesus' name. Pray in Jesus' name, believing that he hears, believing that he will answer your prayers. In Jesus' name, we pray. What else could we do with this name? Cast out demons. Cast out demons. That's what Paul did in Acts chapter 16 when he encountered a young girl that was possessed by an evil spirit which gave her the ability to tell the future. She was a fortune teller. And finally, Paul, becoming greatly annoyed in verse number 18 of Acts chapter 16, he turned and said to the spirit, I command you, watch this, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out of her. And that very hour, the evil spirit left this woman. How many believe that there's still power and ability in the name of Jesus to cast out demons? What else might we do with this name? What else can be done in this name or because of this name? There's great healing found in Jesus' name. As Peter and John are approaching the temple to pray in Acts chapter 3. Peter says to a man that they encounter that's lame from birth, 40 years lame, begging for, for money, begging for alms. Peter says this, I don't have any money. I don't have any silver or any gold. But he did have something, and that's exactly what he gave to the man. He gave him the power that he found in the name of Jesus. Bring that up for us today. Acts 3, 6. Peter said, I have no silver. I don't have any gold. But what I do have, I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. And the man was immediately healed. If you've ever been healed by Jesus, I want to see your hand all across this room. Look around, everybody. Multiple people have been supernaturally and miraculously healed because of the name of Jesus. If you need healing today, believe in the name. Believe in the power in that name. And don't get frustrated while you wait. It may all happen at once. I like that more. I like immediately. But most times it's a process. Most times we have to wait on the fruition and the total fulfillment. But don't get frustrated while you're waiting. Keep praising him while you're waiting. Keep thanking him while you're waiting. Because I'm telling you, there's great power in the name of Jesus to heal all disease. All disease. There's some in this room, you've been waiting for many years. And that takes its toll on you. But hear me say to you one more time, don't get discouraged. Just keep thanking him. Keep praising him. God's the God that heals diabetes, Paige. God has you in the palm of his hands, sis. Let me just tell you something. God has you in the palm of his hands. God says to tell you, I've closed a door for you intentionally to steal you away with me for this season of your life. I'm going to open your ears so that you hear my voice in a way that you have never heard my voice. If you will listen, I will speak to you, says the Lord. I am the one that has closed this door so that I can open a better door for you when it's time. That's a word from the Lord for you today, sis. Good to have you in the house here today. Yeah. Hallelujah. Somebody say Jesus. Great name. Let's look at 
another name today. Number two, Christ. Luke chapter 2, verse 11, For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Now let me make this very clear. Christ is not actually a name. Christ is an office. It's not a name, but it goes with the name, Jesus Christ. So I thought it would be good for us today to examine this por portion of his name and actually the office that goes with the name, Christ. Christ is the official title given to Jesus in the New Testament. It signifies his office as an anointed Savior and alludes to his spiritual qualifications for the task of saving his people. You see, not anyone, not everyone could do this. Only those who were authorized or anointed to do this. The Greek word for Christ is Christos. The Hebrew is Messiah. Both terms come from verbs meaning to anoint with sacred oil. And so the word Christ means the anointed one. The anointed one. To anoint is to rub or to smear. When we speak of the anointing in the word of God, the rubbing and the smearing is God's ability. I pray each Sunday before we step down these steps, the board and my pastors lay their hands on me and they pray for me that God would anoint me. By the way, guys, folks, today when you did that, I just felt this surge of anointing come upon me. I didn't say it to you. I, I, I almost did, but I just thought, wow, there's a, there's a, a quickening that happened. You see, when you're anointed, you have a portion of God's ability applied to you, rubbed or smeared on you. And Jesus is the Christ. Jesus has been anointed by God the Father to serve a threefold office. Prophet, priest, and king. It's a threefold office. Prophet, God anointed Jesus to bring God's message. Priest, Jesus is anointed to make intercession for sins. And king, he is anointed to rule. That's what a king does. And Jesus is anointed to rule the world, but also to rule our lives. I wonder, is the king enthroned in your heart today? Is the king ruling and reigning? Is Jesus Lord? Let's focus on this. Number three, Lord. Luke 1, 17, he, John the Baptist, will make ready for the Lord a prepared people. John the Baptist was to get the people ready for the Lord. Now, Lord is also not a name. Lord is a title. Christ is an office. Lord is a title. And this comes from the Hebrew Adonai. Lord refers to one who has power or authority. It means ruler, Lord, or master. Adonai. Ruler, Lord, master. Jesus came to save the world. And for those who believe, they find in Jesus a Savior. I wonder how many that speaks of in this room. How many have found a Savior in Jesus Christ? Testify 
by just lifting your hand. You've been saved. You've been born again. You found a Savior. Congratulations to you. But that's only the beginning. Jesus doesn't just want to be your Savior. Do you know that Jesus wants to be your Lord? That master, that ruler, the one that is in authority over your life. And so let me ask this very plainly today, La Palma Christian Center and guests who are here today. Is Jesus Christ the Lord? Is he Lord? Is he Lord of your body? Mm, that's a good question, Pastor Steve. It's my body, some will say, and I'll do what I want. You know, the Corinthians didn't even think the body mattered. Food is meant for the, body, for the stomach, and the stomach is meant for food. We are sexual beings. We're meant to have sex, and it was a mess because they didn't understand that Jesus wants to be Lord or ruler or master over your body. And they got in a bunch of trouble over that. And people in 2018 are getting in a lot of trouble over the same thing. Because they won't allow, they want Jesus to be the Savior, but they won't allow Jesus to be the Lord. We have to submit to the Lordship of Jesus. That's why every now and then we need to get on our knees and get on our face and remember who He really is. Come with humility. You wouldn't rush into the Queen's presence. If you had the privilege, has anybody ever been in the presence of the Queen of England? Anyone? I didn't think so. That's a rare, rare privilege. None of us probably will. But if you did, you wouldn't just rush in. There would be a level of respect that came. And humility. How much more... Should we come into the presence of the Lord that is above all the other lords with humility and respect and honor? Is he the Lord in your marriage? Marriage is a give and take. They say it takes two. Really, there's three. Jesus should be the Lord in the marriage. If Jesus is the Lord in the marriage, no matter what comes, there's a way to m navigate and maneuver through it. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Marriage is tough. But if you keep Jesus as the Lord of your marriage, your marriage will be blessed. All the married folks stand real quick. Come on, all the married. All the marrieds. Come on, take, if you're near your spouse, take them by the hand. Father, bless our marriages. Bless our marriages, God. How we need your blessing. How we need your guidance. May you be the Lord in our marriages. In Jesus' name. If you can take your seat. Is Jesus Lord in your home? If he's Lord in your marriage, he's more likely to be Lord in your home. There's too many Christians who are one way in the house of God and another way in their own house. There needs to be some consistency. i got to move on. Is he Lord of your service? Is he Lord of your finances? I don't have time to develop all of this today, but Jesus desires to be Lord. But he won't force his lordship over you. He comes to save the world, and if you believe, we can have everlasting life. We found a Savior. Wow, the Savior has come. Hallelujah. That's step one. Now let Him be Lord. Let Him be the Lord. He is Lord. We used to declare this as a, as a song together as a church. He is Lord. He is risen from the dead, and He is Lord. Every knee will bow. Every tongue confess. Jesus Christ is Let me close today. 
There is one more name that I want you to jot down before you put your notes away. And it is this, Emmanuel. Mm. Emmanuel, Matthew 1, 23, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name, say it with me, Emmanuel. Which means, God with us, that's what it means. Isaiah originally prophesied these words, Isaiah chapter 7. And our text tells us, the translation, our text tells us what this name means. God is with us. Hmm. God is with us. When you're lonely, Emmanuel, God is with us. God is with you. When you're discouraged, come on somebody, Emmanuel, God is with us. If you need healing in your body, Say it again, Emmanuel. You don't know which way to go. You need guidance. You need wisdom. Emmanuel. God is with us. And not only is God with us, he promised that he would stay with us. He said, I'll never leave you, and I won't forsake you. What good news for us today. Emmanuel, God is with us. The angel told Joseph, you're going to have a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. An ordinary name, perhaps, but what extraordinary power and potential. It's a highly exalted name. Given to Jesus. At the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's what Philippians teaches us. You can be mandated to bow a knee one day. You can be forced to proclaim with your tongue his lordship one day. Or you can willingly choose on this day. just a week and a couple of days we will join with people around the world in observation and celebration of one of the greatest events that ever happened and that's the birth of Jesus Christ he came to save the world me encourage you right now if you don't mind would you just bow your heads and close your eyes for a moment just before we dismiss and leave this room let me just ask do you know him as savior first of all have you asked Jesus to be your savior see it's a matter of confessing Jesus and believing in our hearts the Bible says that we will be saved if you're here today and you're ready to accept God's greatest gift ever offered to mankind in his son Jesus and you want him to be your savior and ask him to come in and guide your life or you've never done that or, or your, your life is off track either way just lift your hand right now and let me pray for you before we exit this room is there even just one yes 
Anyone else? Take courage today. Let Jesus be a part of your life today. Ask Him to forgive you of your sin and to take away your wrong and confess Him as Lord right where you are. And the Bible says that you'll be saved. Is He the Lord of your life? If Jesus is the Lord of your life, or if at least that's what you're striving for Him to become, why don't you join me in standing right now? Jesus is Lord. We're praying today that you become Lord and you continue to be the Lord even when we want to take control. We want to make the decisions. May we bow to the Lordship of Jesus. Amen.